The following program is sponsored by CBN. Coming up, get fit, don't quit. Body by Jake's Jake Steinfeld will show you the way. The celebrity trainer shares the best ways you can stay healthy at home. Then, a great grandmother doubled over in pain. One of the most miserable feelings. And no relief was in sight. I was at the point that even drinking water hurt my midsection. Now see how she was healed before stepping into her doctor's office. What was there is no longer there. On today's 700 Club. Welcome to the 700 Club mob rule. That's what's happening in major cities responding to the mantra, defund the police. In Minneapolis, where George Floyd was killed, the city council wants to eliminate the police department and replace it with a safety department. In New York City, Mayor Bill de Blasio has cut the New York police force by a billion dollars. In Portland, where nightly protests rule the city, $15 million has been cut out. And in Seattle, 100 officers will be cut and salaries slashed. It's only to get worse as officers either leave or retire. And it's already happening in Seattle. Here's Chuck Holden with that report. Here in Seattle, one day of recent rioting led to 59 officers being wounded by rocks, bottles, and improvised explosives. Still, even though nightly violence and skyrocketing crime rock American cities, some politicians are echoing the call to defund or even abolish the police. Here, business owners board up stores for protection from groups like Antifa, while their city council members demand more cuts in police budgets. The impact of this war on cops can be devastating, according to Louisiana Congressman Clay Higgins. And as the only U.S. representative still certified as a law enforcement officer, Higgins has frontline experience. I would say to the city leaders and elected officials that are getting on this bandwagon, those that would crucify the police officers that serve their cities and their communities and their states, I'd say to those elected officials, get another job one that doesn't come with an oath. Because the minute you're crucifying, their job began with an oath. And that oath was not to a mayor or a governor or a chief or a marshal or a sheriff. It was an oath to the Constitution. It's easy for you to say with your security detail that we're gonna abolish your police department. What are the communities that you're supposed to represent? What are they gonna do when crime happens? You're gonna call a social worker? at two o'clock in the morning to respond to violence. You know what that equates to? That social worker becomes another victim. So you've heard a lot about the new normal as we've gone through this COVID crisis. And unfortunately, in too many of America's cities now, these boarded up windows behind me are becoming the new normal in city centers. Higgins believes up to a third of all cops in some districts could resign in the coming year, leading to dire consequences. We have an incredible group of uh, people that we've assembled, and to even consider not uh, compensating them fairly was ridiculous. Illegal, by the way, but also ridiculous. And so how else am I supposed to feel? There's a whole room full of department heads in here, and not one of them was named, just me. So yeah, I take it personal. America needs police because men are imperfect. You do away with police departments or, cu or cut them to the quick, evil will take over. Crime will run rampant. Chuck Holton, CBN News, Seattle, Washington. All that's necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing, and that's exactly what's happening. You cannot believe that the mob is winning in this country. And for the first time in history, we have a major political party that's on the side of defunding police, on the side of lawlessness, and uh, on the side of socialism. Well, in other news, Joe Biden made history yesterday when he chose Kamala Harris as his vice president. But her, could her past policies come back to haunt them both? John Jessup has more. Thanks, Pat. Democrats hailed Biden's choice as historic. She is the first black female and the first Indian American on a presidential ticket. 
Former President Obama applauded the move, saying Biden nailed this decision. But President Trump expressed his surprise, calling Harris very nasty to Biden during the campaign. In a debate last year, Harris attacked Biden for his record on busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. But all that is behind them now as they hit the campaign trail together. As far as policies go, Harris supports Medicare for All, the Green New Deal, and late-term abortion. As California's Attorney General, she fought to restrict religious freedom, filing a brief with the Supreme Court against Hobby Lobby's policies to withhold health care coverage for contraception on religious grounds. Although her strong support for police as a prosecutor could be a liability with progressive Democrats. For more now, let's go back to Pat. Uh, she also advocated, as I understand, uh, arresting parents whose p children were out of control and breaking the law. Very interesting. CBN chief political analyst David Brody is here to talk about Biden's choice. And uh, David, some are calling Kamala Harris a safe pick. What do they mean? Yeah, safe in terms of uh, Susan Rice. I mean, look, Susan Rice was going to be called Spine Susan Rice. They already had a name for her in the Trump campaign. She wasn't the pick. You could kind of sense a bit of uh, deflation uh, with the uh, Trump campaign and even the president yesterday with the fact that Kamala Harris was picked. Uh, she is the safe pick. Look, uh, one thing that Joe Biden needed to do with this pick is to make sure folks would see the vice presidential pick as someone who could be president one day. And look, Kamala Harris uh, indeed uh, fits that bill. I mean, she's someone that has been vetted at the state level, a U.S. Uh, senator from California. Uh, she seems to have president, presidential medal uh, inside of her, if you will. And so, look, I, I think he passed the initial test, uh, but her record's going to get scrutinized, Pat, big time. Well, the concern about Joe Biden has been his age and his mental acuity. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think uh, voters, you said you really think she's ready to take the job? Well, look, I mean, I think she's been, to a degree, she's been she's been tested. Obviously, she ran for president. There's going to be a lot more testing ahead of her. I think the question for her going forward is going to be, is she going to be caught in some of these uh, hypocrisy moments? You know, in 2009, uh, she wrote a book, and in that book, she talked about how she wanted more police officers on the street. Well, just a couple of months ago, she said she wanted less police officers on the streets. And so there's, there's a lot of issues as it relates to her time as attorney general, as time as district attorney in San Francisco. Uh, and, and the reason this is going to be important, Pat, is the question is going to be, will it suppress or depress, if you will, African-American turnout uh, come the general election? I mean, they, they're going to need all hands on deck to beat Trump. The Biden campaign knows that. The last thing they can afford is someone that's not going to enthuse the base. And so that's going to be the storyline to watch coming forward or going forward. Well, David, you know, we talk about, quote, African-American. Her mother is an Indian. She's from Chennai, which is in India, and her mother is an Indian from India, which nothing wrong with that, but that's where she's from. Her father is from Jamaica. He isn't from Africa. He's from Jamaica. So she's not really an American black. She, she's a multi-race somebody. Uh, does that make a difference, do you think, in the perception? Well, look, here's the difference it makes. She's a double historical candidate, if you think about it. She's the uh, first black presidential, or excuse me, black uh, vice presidential candidate. Uh, but beyond that, the first uh, Asian American uh, vice presidential candidate. So she's got a couple historical tracks uh, going for her, and I think that that's something important. Also understand, uh, for her background, as it relates to her background, right, her mother from a Hindu background, her father from a Christian background from Jamaica, they divorced at seven. She grew up pretty much in black churches growing up. She calls herself a black Baptist. Uh, and if you look on YouTube, you'll see quite a few uh, YouTube videos of her in church uh, talking to folks uh, from the pulpit. So that'll be scrutinized as well, kind of like Obama was in 2008. Well, you know, people still will vote for the number one on the ticket. They're going to vote for Biden. It's going to be Biden versus Trump. It isn't going to be uh, Trump versus Kamala Harris. So uh, uh, how do you think it's coming out so far? Uh, is the law and order uh, theme going to work for, for uh, Trump, do you think? 
Well, if you look at Donald Trump's Twitter feed, it seems like uh, time after time on Twitter, he's talking about the suburbs and he's talking about how he repealed the Obama Fair Housing Act and all of that. And uh, he says you're going to be safer in the suburbs. So he clearly believes that this is he's all in on law and order. He's all in on trying to tell folks in the suburbs and the suburbs is is kind of code for that moderate voter, uh, maybe more of that uh, uh, middle class uh, or upper middle class voter that he needs to win uh, in 2020. And so, yeah, look, that's what he's doing, Pat. And, and I think it's, it's his only play at this point. And here's why, because he's been doing this ever since he's been president of the United States. He can't go back now. And so he, he's all in. <laughs> well, David, thank you very much. My my advice is they used to say, stay on message, stay on message, stay on message. And if he stays on law and order and they, they're defunding the police all across the country, uh, there's chaos and anarchy in our streets. And I think the people of America will say, we want to be safe. You know, we might not like everything he stands for, but we sure don't want to get shot by a bunch of radicals and have our cities destroyed with the police gone. So anyhow, I think he's got a winning hand. We'll see what happens, Wendy. Let's pray common sense prevails. <laughs> Still ahead, a grandma full of gallstones. How did every single one vanish before she was scheduled for surgery? Stay tuned to find out. And up next, no gym, no problem. You can get a body by Jake while sheltering in place. Jake Steinfeld is back with his get fit, don't quit plan for a healthier you. Jake joins us live right after this. Well, the mantra has for one man is don't don't get, get fit, don't quit, even in the midst of a pandemic. And that's the message of fitness icon Jake Steinfeld. And Jake's got a new plan to do it. And Jake, it's great to have you back as a guest on the 700 Club. How are you, old friend? Oh, my goodness, Pat. It is so great to be here, man. I, I mean, just waiting to come on and talking to everybody in the control room. I know the people at home don't, don't, don't meet the folks from the back from backstage to help you do what you do in the 700 club. But everyone talking about big brother Jake and what you and I did, you know, we started together in 1989, Pat, with your son, Tim, man. To think of that. Well, we, we, we're both just getting younger. <laughs> you look great. You're looking, and you look, you're looking very sporty, man. Well, you're looking very sporty as always. And listen, you know, uh, you are one of my oldest pals and, you, you know, and, and always been so supportive of everything that I've done. And, and during this crisis and during what's happening, your, your audience looks to you for motivation and inspiration. And, and that's why it's fun to come on with you, man. And, you know, you showed a couple of clips of exercises that you can do while you're in your home that anyone can do. But something interesting, you're, you're big on nutrition. I remember we used to talk a lot. And today we've got something really special. Uh, you know, with people, especially 50 plus, having to be super careful about what they're eating and what they're putting in their body. There's a lot of stuff out there that's not very good for you, Pat. And I know you know it. And we've got a brand new nutrition shake. It's called Don't Quit. And it, I, I, I'm going to show it to you right now. There it is. And you're going to love this, man. Uh, we have original flavors uh, of chocolate, vanilla, chai tea, and orange sickle. And it's a cl first clean label. And you know what that means. No soy, no corn, no wheat, no sucralose, any of that stuff in there. And we want to make sure that your audience stays healthy, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. You know this, you're out riding your horse. There's a lot of living left to do. We have 10 grams of protein, all natural, great for you. The other products that are out there, which I know you know, have all these chemicals in there, bad for digestion. You know, bad, you get all these kind of, a, you know, like allergic reactions, and we don't want that. This is the first clean label, this is our max version, 30 grams of protein. Mm. And if you just go to don'tquit.com, you can check it out. Well, it's you, unbelievable. You're you, going to love it. You've tied in with Curry that uh, have got that tremendous uh, coffee uh, company. And uh, yes. um, they, you're backing it together. And uh, is this a complete uh, 
I mean, is, is this a whole meal right here, one of these things? Yes. You just, and this is why I'm so psyched, because you and I always talked about nutrition, yeah. and you're a master of it, man. I mean, look at you, brother. But this is a daily complete nutrition shake, a daily complete nutrition shake. And what that means really is it, it, it has all, 26 vitamins and minerals, all natural. Hey, it's even kosher. And I know you love that too, man. <laughs> and, and it's gluten free. Come on now, <laughs> gluten free, and it tastes delicious. You know, and all of us know. Uh, you know, a lot of people who are listening to us right now need to keep the weight on. Right, the sugar that we have is pure cane sugar. It's all natural, no chemicals. Don'tquit.com. I love this. Is my favorite. I know you're gonna love it. This is orangeicle. And you know we grew up with creamsicles and a half yeah. and you know you know the That's half right. and half bars, sure. right? And when you put this in, think about this: when you open the refrigerator first thing in the morning and you see the words "Don't quit," what does that mean to you, man? I mean, I'm sure you could share with me and the audience. How many don't quit moments that you've had in your life? Yeah. And that's what we want to talk to people about, especially at don'tquit.com. Check them out. Four great flavors. We have the Max version. Chocolate. Actually, our chocolate is sold out already. We literally just opened up. It's going to be in supermarkets everywhere in the next week or so. Jake, but uh, at don'tquit.com, it's what it's about. How much does this cost and where do you get it? Well, you can get it at don'tquit.com right now. And there, I believe it's seven ninety nine for a six pack. So it's very, I wanted to make it reasonably priced. I wanted to be, you know, I've always been about fitness. I've always made fitness fun and we want to make nutrition fun, Pat. And like you and I have said over the course of time, it's, you know, it's, it's about repetition and it's about doing something for your, for your life mm -hmm. and health and hope is what we're both about. And this is what don't quit is about. And, and for your audience, especially right now, Hey, you got a lot of living left. If you're sitting <laughs> watching the show, you know that, right, That's buddy. Right. I mean, you know, I want you to get up in the morning, have a don't quit, right? And then at lunch, between lunch and dinner, if you're thinking about a chocolate bar, I'm a sweet guy. I mean, you, I mean, yeah. I'm very sweet. I know that too. <laughs> so are you, but, but we like sweets and I've, I've got a sweet tooth and this is just beautiful. It, it, it adds that energy plus a 26 vitamins and minerals keep you going all day long. It's don't quit at don'tquit.com. Good Great for you. you well, Jake, I, I appreciate it. And I want you to tell you, I worked out hard yesterday. I, I do all those exercises. I've got, I've got a, a gym in, up in my third floor. That I've got a total gym and I've got some weights and I, I do Pat, all those I know things. Wait a second. Wait a second. I know that. I was up in the gym. Yeah, you and I did push-ups together. <laughs> that's man. right. Come on now. <laughs> well, you I remember when I came to the house. You know. <laughs> hey, listen. I, ju I just have to say this. I know that we're running down on time, man. But it's always a pleasure to be with you and to see what you do to so many millions of people around the world that it's great that you and I have been friends this long. You know, I love your whole family, your son Tim and I and Lisa and Sure. The kids, you got a million grandkids now. And as I've always said, brother, don't quit. Go to don'tquit.com right now. <laughs> All right. Well, Jake, and it's there. It's, Keurig is backing it. And the people who That's right. have that. Uh, Keurig Dr. Pepper. That's right. Keurig Dr. Pepper and my partners, they're awesome people. Uh, Bob Gamcourt, the CEO, is one of these kind of entrepreneurs, just like you, Pat. I mean, he's a real entrepreneur in corporate America who's always doing the right thing. And it's, and it's an honor to be with a great company like that. And an honor to be with you, brother. It really is. It's always great seeing your smiling face, man. Thank you, my friend. Good to see you again. You remember big brother Jake, and he's been a dear friend for years and years and years. And uh, we work out hard. And yesterday was a hard workout day for me. And I, I, I pumped it hard. So. And you know, a shake is great after workout because you can replenish, oh, you know, yeah. when you really need. I want to try that orange sickle. I love cream sickles. Well, I used, love to, used to love them too. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to know more about Jake's Don't Quit program, you can go to cbnnews.com. So what's next? Well, still ahead, we've got your questions and Pat's honest answers. Kathy wants to know, what is the correlation between Black Lives Matter and socialism? That answer is coming up. But first, ultrasounds don't lie. So how did this grandma with a gallbladder full of gallstones end up without a single stone? Her amazing healing when we come back.
that's an excerpt from my book, I've Walked with the Living God, and we'll be having those every day. I'm just reading a little something out of it. And you signed some for me last week. I and did. my mother-in-law loves it. She cannot put it down. Really? She's, her husband says she falls asleep with it on her face, like, and then she wakes up and starts reading again. I love it. People can't put it down. Well, I, it was kind of like uh, I'm a friend talking uh, to friends. Yeah. And, and it was that kind of conversational thing. I'm so glad. Yeah, I, I'm excited. That's so true. I'm, I'm gonna, I, if my dad, I'm going to give it to my dad for his birthday next week. Yeah. So, Dad, if you're watching, sorry. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> Spoiler. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, well, I've got some great news. Next Wednesday on August 19th, we're going to have a special edition of the 700 Club featuring your voicemail questions for Pat. So if you have a question you'd like to ask, just call the number on your screen. There it is, 1-800-677-677. 7884. That's 800 677 7884. Call today only from now, right now until 5 p.m. Eastern Time to leave your voicemail question. Again, the special number 800 677 7884. Call and leave your voicemail question. Pat will be answering them next Wednesday, right here, August 19th on the 700 Club. That's a fun program. I really enjoy it. Me too, and yeah. everybody loves it. So get your calls in during this day, and then next week we'll have the special program where you will answer all the questions, and the major part of the program will be devoted to your questions, and hopefully my honest answers are right. <laughs> Amen. Well, full of gallstones. That's what an ultrasound revealed about Pat Eve's gallbladder. No wonder Pat was in such excruciating pain. Her doctor sent her to a surgeon where she had a second ultrasound, and the result was a real shocker. Take a look. Hi, my name is Pat, and I love spending time with my family. I am a mother, grandmother, and great-grandmother. I love to knit and I love to crochet. I've knitted afghans for all of my children and grandchildren. I enjoy that very much, and as I'm knitting and making those, I pray over them, I pray for that child. I was having this excruciating pain that was in my back. It was like um, one of the most miserable feelings, never having had that feeling before. I was nauseous, anything that I ate anything at all. I had such pain in my midsection. I was at the point that even drinking water hurt my midsection. So my doctor, she said, I think we need to order an ultrasound of your gallbladder. And then we got the results back and she called me. She said, uh, your gallbladder is full of gallstones. And she had ordered, um, an, had made an appointment with a surgeon and I was going to meet with him on July 3rd. I had the appointment at like 9.30 in the morning. So I was in getting ready. I was watching 700 Club, and then they said that they were gonna pray. I just felt that I needed to stop getting ready. So I went and stood in front of the TV with my hand on my abdomen. And just as I started to pray. Someone else with deep pain in your abdomen from gallstones and uh, a gallbladder con condition, and God has just healed that. He's taken away all the pain, all that infection, all the stones now, in Jesus' name, be gone and be made whole. And I'm telling you, the pain I had felt now for like two or three weeks, it was instantly gone. I think it's like that state. I knew that the Lord had healed me. And when the girl was doing the ultrasound, she said, let me tell you, I can't find one stone in this gallbladder. And I went, yes, praise you, Jesus, it's just proof. And so my little doctor comes walking in with his face beaming and he's holding up a, a paper. And he said, you were so right. What was there is no longer there. And I'm doing wonderful. How do you explain the, the magnitude of God that heals? He made these bodies, and He knows how to fix them. And I'm very thankful to Him for the healing. It's the power of the Holy Spirit, and I'm so appreciative. He made these bodies, and He knows how to fix them. Yeah. I was reading today about uh, Jesus, and He said they brought a man to Him who was 
had epilepsy, and they said he was demon-possessed. And they, the father said, if you can do anything, and Jesus said, if you can, all things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible. Now, here's a report that has come in from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Rose had serious foot surgery, and she was watching this program, and she heard you, Wendy, say someone is touching your right foot. You've had surgery, a piece of metal in there, and it's been hurting. God is taking your pain away, and he's healing whatever in your right foot. Mm. And Rose received the word, and the pain stopped and hadn't returned since. Love it. All right. Well, for 40 years, Gary of Newton, Texas, could not walk correctly. He suffered with a painful hip socket issue. One day, Gary was watching the club when he heard you say, Pat, someone, you heard that testimony, and you have the same problem. You have a hip that is not quite sitting the way it's supposed to be. You think you have a shorter leg. Well, right now, your leg is growing, and your hip will be healed. Gary believed the word was for him, and he has not had any pain since that day. That is a creative miracle. Now, folks, God's no respecter of persons, and we want to pray with you because God loves you. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. That's what Jesus said. All things are possible. Now, we're going to believe God. We're going to join hands together. And we're going to trust God for you. So thank you, Father. I join hands with my dear sister in Christ. And we believe together for people in this audience. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Somebody, you've got blisters in your mouth. Blisters. And there are all kinds of blisters. And right now, just put your hand over your mouth. In the name of Jesus, those blisters are gone. Touch. Wendy. Lord, we just come against this evil COVID-19. Lord, we ask right now that you would stop it in its tracks. Lord, there's many people right now suffering, many people fearful of dying from this. And Lord, we ask right now that you would touch them. And Lord, that they will live and not die to declare your works. There's someone Amen. very specifically that has it in your fever is very high in your cough and you think this is the end. It's not the end. God is right now fighting for you. Jesus is praying for you. Don't give up. God is going to heal you. You will be back on your feet. Don't give up. Don't believe the lie. Jesus is fighting for you right now in Jesus' name. Marsha, you have lupus erythematosus. And right now, God has touched you. The lupus is leaving, and that virus that caused it is leaving you, and you are completely whole in Jesus' name. Touch her. Thank you, Lord. Wendy? Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for the, this person that's just in a terrible fear right now. They're, Lord, I just thank you right now that your peace is surrounding them. You, Start praising God because that fear is leaving you right now, and it will not return. You're afraid it's going to come back, but God is delivering you right now from a spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Bounty. Oh Bounty is coming. Bounty. Bounty. God knows how to provide bounty. And you've been living in poverty, and you say, what is wrong with me? And God has heard your prayer, and he says, it's nothing wrong with you. I'm going to look after you, and you will have bounty. So just receive it. Open your mind and receive what God is giving you. Now, may the power of God touch everybody in this audience. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit be upon them. And may we see the glory of God in this land in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hey, listen, we'd love to hear from you, by the way, if you want further prayer. It's an easy number to remember. It's 707,000. If you want to get the 1-800 uh, the, uh, number ahead of it, 1-800-707,000, any place in the country, toll free, call in. And please tell us what God's done. We'd love to share it with you. Wendy? Well, Stella had two mortgages, 40,000 on credit cards, and 10,000 in the hole to the IRS. This couple was drowning in debt. So how did they wind up debt-free in just six months? You don't want to miss this. Plus, in informative, entertaining, and always unpredictable. Your questions, honest answers. Stephen says, testosterone sharpens my senses and definitely raises my libido. Is it wrong to take it? Hear what Pat has to say about that coming up.
welcome back to Washington for this CBN News Break. The popular video sharing app TikTok reportedly violated Google policy by using an extra layer of encryption to track millions of subscribers and their information without allowing them to opt out. Normally, when apps like TikTok are downloaded through the Google Play Store and set up, tracking can be turned off and on. President Trump has criticized TikTok, which currently is under scrutiny and could fall under the president's executive order to restrict Chinese-owned apps. Well, $11 million, that's how much it costs to restore a replica of the ship that brought the pilgrims to America. After more than three years of renovations, the boat named the Mayflower II now is once again docked in Plymouth Harbor. Like the original, the 106-foot ship sails on wind power alone. And although the vessel is thought to closely resemble the actual Mayflower, it's hard to say for sure because no one quite knows what the original looked like when it came to the uh, United States 400 years ago. Well, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website at CBNNews.com. Pat and Wendy will be back with more of the 700 Club right after this. Welcome back to the 700 Club. Ron and Ingrid Sumrall had 30 credit cards and they maxed them all out. The couple had nearly a quarter million dollars of debt. The IRS was on their tail. So how on earth did they pay off every single cent in a matter of months? You're about to find out. When Ron and Ingrid Sumrall married, they both had good jobs. Ron was in the Navy. Ingrid owned her own small business. Still. They began their wedded lives deep in debt. I had approximately $10,000 in debt that I owed the IRS. I had a first mortgage. I had a second mortgage. I had credit card debt, at least thirty dollars or $40,000. To make matters worse, the summer all spent money recklessly and never made a budget. <laughs> it was, I want a bigger, better stereo system. I want uh, a better TV. I want a better car. After five years, they were in $230,000 of debt, mostly on credit cards. By the time we woke up, the minimum payments alone on the credit cards were up to $1,800 a month. The burden is just crushing. The Summeralls sought out financial help to see how they could reduce their debt. In spite of their struggles, the Summeralls believed in giving. Ingrid was a CBN partner before she married Ron. We continue to give to CBN against a financial advisor's advice. It's the one thing that we spent money on that was good. <laughs> the Summerall's knew something drastic had to change. So they decided to put their home on the market, even though the economy was in recession. We prayed about it and said, we're gonna put an eight week time limit on it. Before the eight weeks were up, the Summerall's had a cash offer for their home, one that was enough for the couple to pay off almost all of their debt. Six months later, they were completely debt free. We went to the bank to make that final payment. We screamed at the top of our lungs, we're debt free. <laughs> Ron and Ingrid started budgeting and also doubled their giving to CBN. We had more money to give and it was time. It was time to go to the next level. Helping the home front is a blessing on people that have already dedicated their life to us. The work of CBN is critical to keeping people alive and to sharing the gospel with people. Now Ron has retired from the Navy. Both he and Ingrid have part-time jobs and yet they make more money now than ever before. They say that allows them to put their money towards things that have lasting value. We can't give as much as God can give to us. All he wants from us is to handle money the way he wants us to handle it, his way, because it works. It does work. You know, test him. God says you can test him when it comes to your money. And let me tell you, you will never be disappointed when you test God with your money because he will give you back way more than you give. Well, when you join the 700 Club, the number's on your screen, 1-800-700-7000 is the number to call. And it's, it's just 65 cents a day. $20 a month is all it takes to become a CBN viewer. And uh, I mean, a CBN partner, rather. So when, we, when you do that, we want to give you Pat's new teaching called Do You Need a Miracle? Real Life Stories of God at Work Today. This is our gift to you. We already have some 
people that love it, Do You Need a Miracle was so moving to both of us. Our God is truly an awesome God. He is faithful with God. All things are possible. That was Charles and Morgan from Mesa, Arizona. Thanks, guys, for letting us know that you loved it. Well, coming up, we've got your email questions. Albert wants to know, does God curse a believer for mistakes made in the past? Your questions, honest answers, waiting in the wings. But first, a high school student goes to a concert and hears a life-changing message. What exactly did he hear and how did it lead him to become a voice for the voiceless? Well, Ernie Walton wanted to be a missionary. His dad wanted him to become a lawyer. Today, both can say their dreams came true, thanks to the Regent University School of Law. Lawyers have ins in, in just ways that others don't. And to be able to be an advocate, right, to be trained in the law, to advocate for rights for people, uh, it's, it's an incredible opportunity and means to serve and be that voice for the voiceless. Ernie Walton always knew God had plans for his life. Becoming an attorney wasn't one of them. Growing up in a Christian home, he respected his father's heart for business, Jesus, and passion for a sports outreach ministry called Push the Rock. This was sort of a dream for him and really our family uh, to use a passion that we had, a uh, love of sports, combining it with, with the first love of, of the Lord and spreading the gospel. When I was 15, I went with my dad and my brothers. We went to Japan on a missions trip. We took a soccer team, and, and it was a turning point in my life. I came back and said, Lord, all right, I give you my life. I surrender to what your call for me is. And I'm thinking, what could be better for the kingdom than to be a full-time missionary and go overseas, spread the gospel, play soccer. You know, maybe I could play professionally. His father, on the other hand, saw something different, Ernie's aptitude for justice. But my dad, for whatever reason, he always would say to me, Ernie, we need more Christian lawyers in the world. We need more lawyers who are committed to, to bringing the gospel to the public square and who understand the law to advocate and, and advise nonprofits like Push the Rock. Still, Ernie dismissed his dad's prodding, unable to see how being an attorney could combine with his passion for missionary work. When I was in, in 11th grade, I went to a concert, and all the funding for this concert was going to a group called International Justice Mission. We needed Christian lawyers who would be willing to go overseas to rescue sex trafficking victims, to advocate for the poor, the oppressed, the enslaved, and, and we needed more of them, is what they said to me. And I remember hearing that as an 11th grade student, thinking, that's interesting. Apparently not interesting enough. Still set on serving at Push the Rock one day, Ernie went on to Houghton College in New York, where he studied business management and played soccer. Then on a missions trip to Costa Rica his junior year, Ernie began to doubt his plans for the future. I think I had this plan to work for Push the Rock. Is that really what I should be doing? And I'm just crying out to the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do? I remember sitting in my, my room in Costa Rica and, and the Lord just saying, Ernie, I, I've told you, you know, for many years what you're supposed to do. Your dad has spoken your calling to you to be a Christian lawyer. You've heard about it through IJM to be a Christian lawyer who's gonna advocate for the poor and the oppressed. So I called my dad and said, Dad, you're right. I need to go to law school. And he said, okay, I figured. The only thing left to do now was choose a school. Began to research and talk to people and uh, of course found out that Regent academically was solid, was outstanding, was excellent. But it was a school committed to, to teaching students from a Christian worldview and that exceeded by far my expectations about the quality of legal education. After that first year, my mind was just transformed. He also found that perfect pairing between his aptitude for justice and his passion for sharing the love of Christ. Regent Law started something called the Center for Global Justice, and it was specifically designed for students like me who were coming to law school, feeling they were called not to be necessarily a traditional attorney, but an attorney who wanted to, to do human rights work. I had the opportunity to, to serve as one of the first ever interns with the Center for Global Justice. Ernie met his wife, Lindsay, through Regent Law School. Shortly after graduation, they moved to California, where they both passed the bar and started working at a Christian firm. There was still something in my heart that said, the Lord's brought me here, but this isn't long-term. And I remember getting an email from Regent. There's a position now to, to serve as the administrative director of Regent Law Center for Global Justice. So I applied for the position. We just began to pray and pray, Lord, what do you have for us? 
I interviewed via Skype, and then a few days later was offered the job. We both came to the conclusion that this is a job, you know, that we absolutely felt called to take. Since then, Ernie has become a mentor to interns and students. He's also been instrumental in forging partnerships between Regents Center for Global Justice and organizations like International Justice Mission, the National Institute of Family and Life Advocates, and the European Center for Law and Justice. Our mission is always to work alongside other Christian human rights organizations that are doing this work on the front lines. Being a missionary and being a lawyer there's not even division, they, they marry together so well. And that's what I've learned at Regent Law School and of course doing this work. God provides funding every year for, for us to go to Uganda to fight child sacrifice, to go to France to fight uh, with the European Center for Law and Justice and advocate for persecuted uh, Christians throughout Europe and the Middle East. Some stay right here in the States in DC working to fight child sex trafficking. It's so incredible that the Lord would use us to do justice for some of these victims. He's a God of justice. And so reinforcing that here at Regent with our students is just one of the greatest joys I have, is discipling our students to think biblically about these human rights issues, that we have a responsibility and we will work and we will not stop until justice is done. Isn't that marvelous? You fulfill the desire of your father, you're going to be a lawyer, but you're going to be a lawyer serving the poor and the downtrodden and going for justice. And by the way, let me tell you about um, our school, the school. Uh, Mark Martin is a former North Carolina chief justice. He's the dean. They have master's and doctoral uh, degrees. They have a bachelor's degree in law and national security, criminal justice, and paralegal studies. And if you're interested in enrolling, and we're having a record enrollment at Regent University. It is exceeding all the models so far, more students, more credit hours, and the law school, one more time, 1-866-910-7615 or www.regentedu. And uh, it's time to get the best education in the world. Even during a pandemic, people yeah, are signing up. It's amazing. It's like Goshen. And, you know, we haven't had one single student or one single member of our staff catch COVID. Not one single Praise one Praise out God. of the, I mean, not a one. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, wow. God's just protecting us and the revenue is bigger than ever. Everything is just go booming. It's wow. fabulous. Praise the Lord. Fabulous. That is good news. Okay, let's get email. Well, it's time for your email questions, but first want to remind you to call in your voicemail questions for Pat today. We have a special number for you, 800-677-7884. You can call today only until 5 p.m. Eastern Time to leave a voicemail with your question for Pat. Then next Wednesday on August 19th, Pat will be answering your questions right here on the 700 Club. Again, that special number is 1-800-677-7884. Call and leave your voicemail for Pat, and he is going to answer it next and week. you will be here with me, I and will. we will be here together one week from today, and it's going to be fun. It's always fun. All okay. right, let's start with Kathy's question today. She says, I heard Pat say something about Black Lives Matter have something to do with socialism. What is the correlation between Black Lives Matter and socialism, Pat? All right, now, we talk about oppression of black people. That's one thing. There's an organization, though, that has the name Black Lives Matter. The two of the three women who organized that organization on their web page identified themselves as trained Marxists. Mm. They are trained Marxists. That's communists. Trained Marxists. And it, it's at the heart of that whole thing. So it's not some benign thing. You can say they hijacked a, a peaceful protest, sure, but that's who they are. And the people involved, and the same with Antifa, those people came out of Nazi Germany. They were rebels against the fascism, and they are they're defunding police. They're, they're anarchists. They want to destroy everything. And that's their origin. So just keep in mind, it is socialist and as I understand immoral and a number of other things those women uh, uh, were projecting. Now we're just talking about three three women, three young women. 
two of the three on their website identify themselves as Marcus. Okay. Wow. All right. Stephen says, I'm a 54 year old man. I have been taking testosterone on and off for a few years. It sharpens my senses and definitely raises my libido. Is it wrong to take it? Uh, I, I don't think it is because really, if you have low testosterone, your bones are brittle, uh, your uh, muscles atrophy. There are a lot of things, but let me tell you, if you take Androgel and these others, make absolutely certain that you get a blood test and a doctor prescribes it because too much of the stuff can uh, have ill effects upon you. Prostate cancer, right? Or it, it possibly, absolutely, oh, absolutely prostate cancer. If, if you're tending toward you know, prostate cancer, any other kind of cancer, I wouldn't do it, but there's nothing in the world wrong with it. And, so it raises your libido, but it also takes care of a whole lot of other things that, that are going. I mean, when you lose human growth hormone, you lose uh, testosterone, you lose some of the other things that keep you strong, your muscles atrophy and your bones get brittle, et cetera. So there's nothing wrong with it, okay? All right, here's one from Albert. He says, does God curse a believer for mistakes made in the past? Please explain the difference between the consequences of behavior before salvation and being cursed by God. Um, I don't think God is cursing anybody. I don't think uh, the curse of God is upon Christians. Uh, and uh, if you sin, look at David. David was a man after God's own heart. Well, he not only uh, sinned with Bathsheba, but he had the man killed. I mean, it was a bad thing. Adultery and murder. Uh, he had adultery and murder, and he paid the price. But you, you read later on in the Bible about my child David. This will be the child of David. Yeah. David was held up as a man after God's own heart. So there's no curse of God on people because they sin. All right. All right. Jay says, a group of critical people left the church. I witnessed how they had murmured against our pastor and our congregation. After almost a year, they came back, apologized to the pastor, and have acted like nothing happened. I felt bitter towards them, like the brother of the prodigal son, and I don't like it. I don't want to feel this way. Am I wrong to feel this way? What What can I do? Well, the best thing to do about somebody that you hate is stop talking about the facts. You hate them and start thinking of all the good things. The, these are nice people. They witness for the Lord. They've been giving, and, and God, I pray you blessings. So begin to pray a blessing upon them. The Bible says, oh, cast out a scoffer, and try, strife shall cease. And so <clears throat> when you've got a group of dissidents in an organization and they're scoffing in all the time, the best thing to do is to get rid of them. All right, real quick. You got uh, I think we might have time for one more, right? All right okay. Um, I don't You don't see have it. one. All right. Well, today's Power Minute is from Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. Well, tomorrow, up close and personal, an interview with um, Fox News host Martha McCallum. You'll find she's written a book. Everybody's writing books. They've <laughs> they got a lot of time on their They've got a lot of time on their time to talk about their book. Sorry. Well, for Wendy and all of us, thanks so much for being with us. And Lord willing, I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.